give the floor to Afghanistan. Mr. Chairman, distinguished delegates, human rights are at the core of the Afghanistan Constitution. Drafted in the background of an imposed conflict, our Constitution was written with a renewed vision of upholding the central values of human rights. Hence, the promotion and protection of human rights is a constitutional obligation of the government of Afghanistan and is strongly committed to its full realization. Despite facing massive security challenges, our current reform agenda progresses at a rapid pace with promotion and protection of human rights as its core principles. The Afghanistan Peace and Development Framework setting our path towards self-reliance has ushered in institutional reforms across sectors. Poverty alleviation, increased employment opportunities, improvement in health and education indicators, as well as adherence to the rule of law and combating corruption are key priorities of the government, which underlines our efforts in upholding human rights for all Afghans. In this regard, Afghanistan's Independent Human Rights Commission, a constitutional body, has taken a key role in monitoring, promoting, and protecting human rights at all levels. Further, today, Afghans freely exercise their freedom of speech and expression. Our diligent efforts in realizing these basic rights have led our media to be one of the most open and vibrant, vibrant media in the region. However, despite significant gains, the ongoing imposed war against the Afghan people has deprived us of our basic rights to life. Just in the half, first half of this year, uh, nearly 1,700 Afghans lost their lives to an imposed conflict. The ongoing violence has robbed thousands of young Afghans of their innocence. Many have fallen victims to the ongoing bloodshed, have lost limbs to landmines recruited as child soldiers, and in some cases, brainwashed outside Afghanistan and sent back to carry out heinous suicide attacks, which must be prevented on an urgent basis. The government has taken strong measures in safeguarding the rights of children. Tangible measures taken by us include the enactment of national legislation to implement commitments under various international instruments, including the Conventions on the Rights of the Child on the Involvement of Children in Armed Conflict and its optional protocol. Further, we have a new penal code that criminalizes the sexual abuse of children and intend to regulate the juvenile rehabilitation centers, expand the presence of the child protection units in the Afghan National Police Recruitment Centers, and continue our campaign of promoting children's rights. Empowering women and protecting their rights constitute one of the main pillars of our national priority programs. Today, our government has made women's empowerment a key priority. To embark on this journey, we had launched our national action plan on the implementation of the United Nations Security Council Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace, and Security. This plan aims to increase women's participation in decision-making processes, especially in senior levels of public administration, peace process and security sectors, provide increased access to healthcare and other support services to survivors of sexual and domestic violence, improve education and employment opportunities and protect women from all forms of violence. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> at the international level, Afghanistan adheres to the United Nations core international human rights treaties and have signed and ratified seven core international human rights conventions. In this regard, it must be noted that Afghanistan was among the first Islamic countries to support the approval of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. This year, we have also ratified the optional protocol on the, to the Convention Against Torture and Other Cruel, Inhuman, and Degrading Treatment or Punishment, which is a further step towards strengthening the international, our international commitments. Mr. Chairman, Afghanistan was elected to the Human Rights Council and we have been an active member of the council advocating our universal human rights principles and values. However, as we advocate for a more peaceful world where human rights for all is respected, terrorists and violent extremists with their sanctuaries and safe havens outside Afghanistan have continued to attack our, attack our people, thereby adversely affecting the full enjoyment of our political, civil, economic, social, and cultural rights. This is why my government initiated the resolution on establishment of an international day to remember and pay tribute to the victims of terrorism. The, uh, through this resolution, we are garnering international support to enable victims and resume exercising their inalienable rights. Mr. Chairman, 
In the last 17 years, our committed efforts to protecting the rights of our people have trans. I thank Afghanistan. I now give the floor to 